Okay, knock it off. Pronto. Where are you going? You hear what I said? I didn't you? I said, where you gone? What's all that shooting, Freeman? Nothing to worry about. Nothing at all. My boys are just keeping in practice. That's the way you want it. Here's a little present for you. $12,000, exactly the amount Jim Norton and his gang robbed from us last year. Put this in the safe, Carson. And so, on behalf of the company, I want to express our gratitude, Mr. Regan. Now, just a minute. This Freeman was Jim Norton's right hand, but that isn't really proof of anything. They split up after the robbery. There were six men in the gang, Logan, Hunter, and Freeman, these three luckily were tracked down and gotten rid of by our bounty killer. Pardon, Mr. Regan, I mean. So that leaves Buck Dago and Sam Lister. The head of the gang, Jim Norton, was killed in Topeka. Jim Norton has a twin brother. An honest man, so they say. He might have something to tell us. At the moment, he's living in Montana. I'd like to pay him Call. Just to be sure the money I found is the same money the gang stole from you. Now look here, Regan. In Montana, they consider bounty killers like you not much better than bandits. I can't give you any protection. That won't matter much with a war going on. A war? Yep. War is broken out in Montana. Farmers fighting against cattlemen, ranchers, lynching. In Montana, everyone's an outlaw. Remember the 
man who lay cold on the sand. The man who lay cold on the sand. You'd make it. You ain't got here any too soon. I've been expecting you since Tuesday. You see what's going on out there? Th those dirty assassins are going to lynch Bill Rogers unless we hurry up and stop them. Now, now, we'll give those men a brand very lesson. They, they won't forget, eh, Sheriff? Hey, come on, follow me. Be, be brave. J just be brave. There's nothing to it. The new sheriff said. Ah, oh, you stupid idiots. You told me you'd eliminated Coleman. I swear, Amos, I shot him myself. Then who is that? It don't matter none if you are the new sheriff. You just better stay out of this here or there'll be trouble. This dirty sneak tried to poison my wells and kill my cattle. Well, did you? They destroyed my harness, sheriff. And burned down my house. They found my wife there alone and... <laughs> She was so sorry, she committed suicide. Too bad her husband wasn't in the company. <laughs> Release that man right away. Oh! 
It'll be a bullet in the brain if you boys try that again. The same goes for everybody here. Take him inside. Did you, did you hear what the sheriff said, boys? From now on, we're gonna have a little law and order around here in Miles City. And the first one of you who tries to break it, whether he's a farmer or a rancher, is gonna have to answer to me. Uh, and the sheriff, that is. All right, you two. Into the lockup. <laughs> Come here, Fisher. You're missing a most interesting sight. Come on, come on. There's nothing to be afraid of. I'm not afraid, Judge. At last, the new sheriff's arrived and taken the wind out of two Amos's boys. He's the one they wrote us about. The man we've needed around here for months to take the place of poor Gibson. I should have done the sweeping up before, but I was all tied up this morning, what with one thing and another. By the way, just what on earth took you so long to get here? Judge Holden wrote to you over two months ago. Right after Sheriff Gibson departed from this veil of tears and sorrows. Poor old Gibson. But you're going to do fine. You made a good impression. You'll like it here. There's a good bed. As for the cooking, well, I'll do it myself. Hey, it's me. Huh? What do you want? How about a little coffee? Coffee, coffee. Now, what do you think this place is? The Palace Hotel? <laughs> Another cup of coffee. That there don't work, Sheriff. <laughs> know anyone called Norton? Trevor Norton? <laughs> sure I do. Hasn't been in these parts long, but he's one of the best farmers around. Thanks. Strikes me as the kind of man you can trust. Hey, look out. Well, then watch what you're doing. Uh, would you like your coffee now or later, Sheriff? Trevor Norton? Yes, uh, Norton believes that the cattle ranchers and the farmers can live side by side in peace. On the other hand, there's Amos Bramsbury that uh, doesn't think they can. Who's he? Why, he's the head of the ranchers. He's got a mean bunch of followers. I know he's trying to take over Miles City. you got to watch a step with him. Isn't there anyone with the guts to try to do something? Oh, sure, except they're all dead now. Good morning, Sheriff Coleman. I'm Judge Holden, Horace Holden. And this is Mayor Fisher. He's been mayor 18 years now, but this year we're hoping he'll retire. Why, Judge, no one else wanted the job, Sheriff. And now I want to welcome you to Miles City. I hope you like our little town. And I want to thank you for accepting my offer, Sheriff. But Judge Holden, I think I ought to tell you that... The pay is very good. <laughs> you that ought to be, Mayor. This here's a rich state. Would you take a cup of coffee, Judge? Be glad to, Smitty. You make the best coffee in town. Thanks. Hmm. It won't be easy here. As you may know already, your predecessor, Sheriff Gibson... Gibson didn't meet a natural death. I know that. But, Judge, as I was about to explain to you... You're going to back out? <laughs> Not yet. Uh... It's a pretty bad town. What are you going to do about it, Sheriff? Right at the moment, I think... I'll go have a glass of beer. <laughs> you, Farley, but I can't give you more than $5,000 for your place. I haven't got any more. That's plenty. That's plenty, Norton. I just want to pack up and get out. Those thugs of Amos have threatened me. Sign. What'll it be? Like a whiskey? No, a beer. You the new sheriff? It seems like it. Excuse me. When they got Sheriff Gibson, I had to buy a brand new mirror. You understand. <laughs> Don't worry about it, pal. I'll try not to get killed for the sake of the mirror. <laughs> well, adios, Norton, and good luck to you. Uh, adios. Would you have a drink with me? I'm Trevor Norton, Sheriff. Welcome to Miles City. Sure, I've heard of you, Mr. Norton. About your war with the ranchers. Oh, you have? I think that we farmers and the cattlemen can get along just fine. And you? What do you think, Sheriff? Yeah, sure, with barbed wire fences separating you. Uh -huh. There's no more barbed wire. You're wrong. 
I can't imagine who it was told all that nonsense to you, Norton. I'm Amos Bransbury. And you were about to say? That the farmers here are breaking the law. In Montana, the ranchers own the land. If we allow the farmers to take over the land and set up barbed wire fences, then our herds won't be able to graze. <laughs> Montana has lots of space. There should be plenty for all. Agreed. If only the cattlemen could look at it that way. But unfortunately, they don't. They're powerful, Sheriff. And they're not going to stand back and let someone else get in there. Sheriff, there's a crowd outside the jail trying to break their way in. See you later, gentlemen. I'm really looking forward to the end of this conversation. Smitty will break the door down. Open up and let Bill out of there and we'll go away. And you get your boys out of here. The first man to lay the hand on that door, I'm going to blast the smithereens. Now you hear that? That's enough. That's enough. You've had your fun, now beat it. I'm the law around here. We're going to take Bill, Sheriff. The cattlemen are the ones to blame, not us. We'll see what the judge has to say. Until the trial, he's going to stay right here. Arrest Amos Bransbury. Why burns our fields and his herds destroy our seeds? I think it's about time we had a little justice. Seems to me you think that justice simply means getting what you want. You have a lot to learn in this town. Remember this, Sheriff. Some friendly advice. Go with us. The man in the middle who gets hurt. Let's go, boys. Hey, Smitty, it's me. Oh, uh, sorry, Sheriff. I don't see as good as he used to. I'm not worried about my head so much as my new hat. <laughs> <laughs> it won't happen again, Sheriff. This jail's too crowded for me. I want some peace and quiet. As soon as it's dark, I want that one to escape. Have a horse ready and some provisions. I get We're going to make this real easy. I get you, Sheriff. I made it clear I wanted two good gunmen, and you were fool enough to send two idiots. Listen to me, Amos. I know we shot and killed Sheriff Coleman. I saw the body. He had a bullet hole right through the middle of his forehead. Are you sure of that? Coleman sentenced me to ten years in Tombstone. I am not the type who forgets the face of an enemy. Then who is this meddler who's come to town? Listen, Amos. It don't make no difference who he is. Let's get him out of the way. No. Not till I give the order. He may be useful to us. I'm going to learn who he is and what he wants. Now get out. And one other thing. I don't want you seen around town by anyone. Yeah! me towards the door. What's on your mind, Sheriff? Why don't you pick up the lady's suitcase? We're too far up to reach it. Well then, why don't you come on down? <laughs> All right, pick it up. That's better. Next time you'll mind your manners, won't you, boys? Thanks a lot. It's my pleasure, ma'am. 
A few days rest will calm you boys down. Come on. Looks like open house here today, huh? Jailhouse is getting more popular than the saloon, I'd say. Thank you. Thank you, thank you kindly, fellas. Huh? All right, now step right inside. Right inside and make yourselves at home. <laughs> kind of looks as though you don't like getting caught, eh, Charlie? <laughs> no, I don't like it, Smitty, and neither does Amos Bransbury. Oh, now, is that so? Well, that name don't mean anything around here. March, <laughs> left, right, left, right. Hey. If you're smart, you'll let those boys out of there, Sheriff. Amos Bransbury don't think your tricks are funny at all. I'm not interested in Amos Bransbury's opinion. Get that straight. Those ranch hands have been out on the range three months with the cattle. They got a right to have a little fun. They can find it somewhere else than at the expense of a beautiful girl. Ah, well, that gal, she's looking for trouble. She's one of them settlers got a farm outside town, taking our land away from us. You're the one looking for trouble, Carver, and I'm going to give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Step right in, sir. <laughs> There's a private room, and it's just for you. You're gonna pay for this, Sheriff, and pay plenty. I know, Miss Sally, my kind regards to your uncle. Why, thank you, sir. Oh, watch the steps. That's right. Got everything you need? Oh, this is Rhoda. Why, thank Hello. you, yes. Hello. I'm Sally Norton. And thanks again for your help. I think I know your father, Trevor Norton. He's my uncle, but to me, he's almost a father. Have you lived here very long? No. I've been at boarding school since I was a little girl. I came out here to live with my uncle just after my father died. Now, I hope you'll excuse me, Sheriff. It's time I got back. Tomorrow we'll all try to set up the barbed wire. Yeah, take it over here for Farley, huh? Yeah, it kind of looks like it. You're going to be on our side against the cattle ranchers? I got no cause to. I'm a peaceful man. You're like Jeff Farley, you know that, Norton? You're just a couple of weak-kneed cowards. I'll pretend I didn't hear that, Graham. I'm a farmer just like you. Except where there's violence, understand? If you ain't with us, you're a guest.
Uncle Trevor. No! On your feet. Get off my land. When Amos and the ranchers get after you, the only thing we'll do for you is dig your grave. I don't yield to no man's threats. I just want to be left in peace. Come on. Every so often, it's a real pleasure to see that star, Sheriff. That right? Yeah. This morning, he protected me from a gang of hooligans. Really? Looks like you're going to save the whole doggone family. Oh, look what that brute did to your vest. Well, I think you came out a whole lot better than he did. I'd think about it before I picked a fight with you, Norton. <laughs> you overrate me. I just happen to be lucky, that's all. And then we farmers have hard hands. Farmers don't have hands like this. <laughs> Why not? More likely they held a pistol instead of a rake. Won't you stay and have dinner with us? It won't be anything special, but I'm sure there'll be plenty. Thanks, but I have some things I have to do, Sally. I've got some guests of my own to feed. Come back and see us, won't you, Sheriff? You can count on it. He'll come back. He smelled his prey. He won't abandon the trail. You better listen, Amos Bransbury. I won't take this from Coleman. No, not from anyone else either. He's right. He can't do this to me, Holden. I mean it. You seem kind of nervous, Amos. You bet I am. Coleman's going to find out I'm used to getting my own way. Now, don't go raising your voice so loud. These boys need all the beauty sleep they can get. Shut up. I'll take that Coleman and... What's the legal penalty for not respecting authority? A month in jail, Sheriff, with provisional liberty. Provided the bail's been paid. They say there's always a price for everything. I want my men. I'll pay you whatever you ask for them. All right, we'll make it easy for him. $200 a man or 30 days. Whichever you like, Bransbury. That's the maximum penalty. But he has the authority. Here's a couple of thousand. And you can keep the tip. <laughs> We sure will, Judge, won't we? Smitty, let him out. Huh? Yeah. If I had my way, they'd rot in there. Good bunch of renegades. Come on, get out. All of you. Get out. Good riddance to you. Stay out of town. And I don't want to see any of you here again. I'll give you fair warning, Bransbury. If the farmers are attacked, then I'll know who's behind it. This is none of your business, Sheriff, so keep out. I know the law as well as you do. Tell me, Judge Holton, what's the maximum penalty for impersonating an officer of law in Montana? Impersonating a lawman's punishable by death, Bransbury. Get going. Uh, yeah. Stay out of town, you hear that? Give the signal. Ask me what I think, boys. I'm not anxious to mess around with the law. Coleman's no coward. We've seen plenty of examples of that. Are you backing out, Pearson? If the farmers win the upper hand around here, the rest of us will be finished. All because you're scared. Just a minute, Barkley. No one could accuse me of being scared. But I'm not going to go killing anyone. That's what I said when you went and murdered Sheriff Gibson. What makes you so sure I did it? I'm telling you. Amos Bransbury is right. As long as he runs things in Montana, you and I'll all be sitting pretty. Right, Barclay? Amos, tell us what we're going to do about this Coleman. 
The new sheriff's nobody's fool, but I can take care of him when the time is right. But just now we got the problem of these farmers to think about. What are you planning, Amos? Well, it's simple. We can leave it all to a couple of hired gunmen. They'll do what I tell them, destroy farmhouses and crops, and then no matter what happens, our hands will be clean. Sure, our hands will be clean. But not our consciences, Bransbury. Our consciences won't bother us when all of us get rich out of this person. It's too late now for any of us to turn back. Carver's already started. That clear? We begin with Norton and see that you burn it down. behind him. Take the old upstairs. Murderers, let me go. Let me go. Put a gag on the lady and shut up all this screaming so we can get our work done in peace. Somebody's here. I think it's the sheriff. <laughs> Friends pay a double our price when we tell them we picked off the sheriff in the bargain. This looks like it's going to be fun. he opens the door, we'll shoot him down.
Thanks. Thanks a lot. Uncle Trevor. He's out there all alone. than I thought. Jim Norton. You're slipping, Buck. Save the wisecracks. We're in a trap. What are we going to do about it? Uh, we're getting between us. Sure, buddy, after you. <laughs> you want to surrender now? Hey, that's his voice. No, Jim Norton's dead. This is your last chance. Surrender! Yes, that's Jim. Don't be so sure, Buck. Don't be so sure. I'll tell him we surrender. Are you loco? If that's Jim, we'll be dead before we're able to shoot. But if it's Trevor, we might just be able to bluff our way out of here. For a man of peace, Norton's pretty good with a gun. We could sure use him. Should we help the man out? I'm willing. Throw down your guns, boys. You heard me. Get your hands up. Get going. You two. Sam and Buck. Don't try to stop me, Sheriff. I'm sorry, Norton. I wouldn't want to have to hang you. Those two there are killers. Pretty fast on the trigger yourself. Well, I had a little luck. I'm not too bad a shot, you know. That's a beauty. A man would have to practice a lot to win a gun like this, Norton. He won the gun in Kansas City. To Trevor Norton, the winner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a very nice prize. What are you two Rebs doing around here? What do you think we're doing? You both already know what I think. Need a hand with those boys, Sheriff? Thanks, but I can manage these two alone. Get! Those two men were unarmed. Why did you almost shoot? Sometimes things can make you blind, my child. Looks like we were mistaken with you, Norton. Did you just come here to tell me that? I came to tell you we want you to take command. You mean you'll take orders from me? Yes. We're all going to try to remain at peace. But if we should fail, we'll fight. I'll agree to that. 
We're with you, Norton. <laughs> Farmers are going to learn who's boss around here, right, Amos? I suppose you two know what's going to happen to you. You're going to give us our liberty, Sheriff, ain't that right, Sam? You bet. Sheriff can't accuse us of being guilty. Except killing two of Norton's help. Us? We were minding our own affairs when we got caught in the middle of a gun battle, Sheriff. <laughs> we hid behind that rock because we didn't want to get mixed up in it. Take a look at the bullets in the bodies and you'll see. You'll learn that the caliber wasn't the same as the bullets in our guns. Doc Bennett is going to examine the corpses and then we'll see. Good, Sheriff. He'll find the proof that we're innocent. If so, then there's always this. You were mixed up in the robbery of the Prescott Mining Company. You're going to have a hard time trying to pin that on us. We don't know nothing about it. Jim Norton confessed. Jim Norton? But Norton's dead. He's been dead for three months. Wait a minute now. The sheriff here is going to give us a different story. Like who got those $12,000 from Freeman? I wouldn't know. But they say that Jim Norton is still living. Sally, you can wash up tomorrow. Mm, then I'll go along to bed. I'm tired. <sighs> Sleep well, Uncle. You need a good rest. Uh, good night, Sally. Trevor. You saw what happened today. Tell me what you're going to do. Are you going to attack the cattle ranchers? Now, take it easy. When we go to town tomorrow, you yourself can take Mr. Egan a truce proposition. Thank you, Uncle. I adore you. Only because I love peace. Also because tomorrow I'm going to town. There's something else I want to ask about the sheriff. Uh, I understand. But are you all that sure that he loves you? Mm -hmm. Please be sure, child. I don't want to have you suffer for anything. Mm. Whoa! Look. The men want to have a little talk. We'll wait for you in the saloon. All right, be right with you. Come on. You're still willing to act as our ambassador to the sheriff, Sally? Yes, if you're sure it will help keep the peace. I hope it will, for your sake. Uh. is buying up the rest of the ammunition. Watch 
like it. What do you have? Whiskey. Okay. place is full of ranches, and it seems like not one of them is thirsty. They're all buying ammunition. There's gonna be a real showdown with the ranchers. What's the news I'm bucking, Sam? The bullets taken out of your men were fired from a 45. They use that caliber, they're dead. If not, they'll get off free. Buy up all the ammunition in the store, Grant. It's safer for us to buy the ammunition. Get all the men ready. Yeah, Norton. Got an errand for you. Tell my niece I've gone to look for new workers, and you go with her to the farm. Okay. I'll be ready for a surprise attack. Well, Sheriff, do you think letting Sam and Buck go free will help to expose... They think Norton has the money, and they want to settle up accounts with him. Norton might die, Sheriff. And for all you know, he's innocent. Yeah. I could be mistaken. Still, it's worth a try. It's impossible to keep them in jail any longer. We can't prove they killed those men in Orton's. They did it. Sheriff, Church, I got something to tell you. There's been a big run on ammunition the last few days. But today was the worst. They cleaned me out. Was it the ranchers? Yes, the ranchers had bought plenty. But, but today, some of the farmers came in and bought up all the rest. Over 3,000 cartridges. I can't understand it. Who do you think is behind them? Norton's taken over now, and he's convinced them to fight. I get it. He'll make them fight. He's got plenty of reasons to get our attention away from him. If the farmers have a showdown fight with the cattle ranchers, then Norton can escape unobserved while we're busy somewhere else. Yes, that's exactly it. I'm going to free those two. Come along. Sheriff, I pray to God you're not mistaken about Norton. How do you do there, Miss Norton? Who are you? Even though we happen to be in jail, we are friends of your old man, Jim Norton. My father died three years ago. Now, miss, don't pretend with us. Your pa worked with Sam and me for ten years. We know him well. It's true. Jim was always spouting to us about his pretty little Sally. Didn't he send you away to school in the East? My father was honest and not a person to have anything to do with your kind. Listen to her. Listen to her. It's time someone smartened you up and told you what a crook your old man really was. Maybe. Maybe. Could be they was talking about his twin brother. Oh. Well, what are you doing here? My uncle sent me. I must see you. It's very important. Wait a minute. Let him out of there, Smitty. You're free to go. I got no proof on you. What did I tell you, Sheriff? We're both innocent as a couple of little angels. <laughs> well, what is it? It's nothing. Tell me what it is. Nothing. What is it? Nothing. She just needs sympathy. <laughs> Get out of here, you two no good rattlesnakes. Go on out and stay out. <laughs> I guess it's a good time for me to go out and wash up the dishes, no? Now, what do you want to tell me, Sally? It's all my uncle's idea. The farmers and the cattlemen must get along together, you see. They must have a meeting at once and set up definitive rights to be decided legally in court with the judge presiding. Then the land must be used as the court decides. Do you believe it can work? Yes, if he's sincere. But you know he is. Uncle means what he says. Then why didn't he come to tell me himself instead of sending you? Do you think I'm lying about this? Too bad. Good day, Sheriff Coleman. Okay, 
it's time we told him we're getting out. Right. Just a minute, boys. Got something to ask you. At your service, service Mr. Bradbury. Bradbury. I'm willing to forget the past and to give you another chance. You're being too kind, amigo. We'd like to help you out, but one of Buck's cousin's sick in bed, and we're going down to be with her. <laughs> you know what to do, Carver. I'm ready to go. You, Sammy? No, Jim. It's us. You don't look glad to see us. There must be some mistake. My name's Trevor. Don't be difficult. Jim Norton is the only man I know who can shoot like that. We only want what's out. Right, Sam? That's right. Just our part. Plus, the usual interest rates we collect. I don't know what you're talking. Don't get funny now, Jim. Or you'll live to regret it. Where have you hidden our money, Jim? Tell so we'll rip you apart. Boys, I'll repeat what I said. I'm Trevor Norton. <laughs> Ready, pal? <laughs> now tell me, Norton, where's that money? <laughs> Nothing up there. Nothing here either. Spill it! If you want to kill me because I'm Jim's brother, there's no need for all this comedy. If that was Jim, he wouldn't stand for all that. Somebody's coming. Come on. Come on, we had enough trouble already with the sheriff. I'm taking this with me. He busted mine. Let's go. Come on. Sally, you'll be all right? Of course, thanks. What on earth? Who did this to you? Two bandits. They took me by surprise. Salmon Buck? How did you know? Listen to me, Uncle. Please tell me the truth. Another spoonful. Don't you like my cooking? I don't care for it much either, but I eat it anyway. Sheriff? Hmm? Judge Holden wants to talk to you. Kind of looks like something serious. You stay right here, Smitty. I'm dead ratted. Don't even let a man eat a meal in peace. Now you know everything about your father, Sally. I... I... I wanted to hide it from you forever. But those two dirty dogs... 
I know, but I had to hear it. When you were going away to college, he wanted to give the money back. But that idea of giving it back cost him his life. And yet you had to get hurt. Those two men thought you must have been my father. Those two bandits didn't know about your father's plan. Poor dear uncle. You're paying for my father because you're his brother. But you're the one that's honest and good. But you must not hate your father, child. Those two almost killed you. And just because of the horrible things that man did. Listen to me, Sally. Everything's going to turn out all right. Mm. Just why you're so sure I want you back with me. We knew you wanted this, Bransbury. It's all over for us, Amos. The federal judge on his way here. Calm down, Barclay. Amos, you know darn well what's going to happen to us. There's going to be a trial to hang us all with barbed wire. The way they did in Kansas and Nebraska. That wouldn't be the case if Norton were to kill the judge we're expecting. Yeah? Well, what about the sheriff? Hmm. The sheriff won't know anything. Sam has brought us the evidence to put the blame on Norton. This time, all of us are completely in the right, and we can ask for justice. I see what you mean, Amos. As soon as we're able to get rid of the judge, we can lynch Norton. Yes, when the farmers are all in town to greet the federal judge, we act at once. We'll get rid of Norton and set fire to his house. You, Barclay, you're the best man for this. And what do you want us to do? I'll give you one more chance. If you mess up this time, you'll discover the kind of treatment the boys dish out to cowards. What will be the most effective way to settle accounts with the sheriff? Now, who would you say, Barkley, are the two best shots we got? Uh, Barney, Karachas, am I right? Yep. I'm gonna get rid of the sheriff, once and for all. He's not gonna bother me again. And if the boys get it instead? We'll still be able to put Coleman out of the way. If this Coleman's who I think, and I'm pretty sure, he'll leave his usual visiting card. What is this? Sorry, you mind saying that again? I'm a little deaf in my left ear, remember? You know, for a sheriff, you're a little too fast on the trigger. That is, if you are a sheriff. I'll bet he ain't really. To me, it looks more like a bounty killer. We ought to do something about it. It's all over, Egan. You're finished. Don't be so sure of that, Bransbury. Watch out what you do to me. I'm still the sheriff of Miles City. You're not the sheriff and you never were. You're no better than a rattler, Regan. You fooled the town into thinking you were Coleman, only I knew who you were. In Montana, we hang men like you. Why are you waiting? Hey, 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 hey. Some time now. Yeah, too bad.
Well, you varmints didn't reckon on me now, did you? <laughs> no siree, but here I am, Sheriff. Here, let me give you a hand. <laughs> oh, you're a heavy one. This man is the Sheriff, Bransbury. You'll answer to me for this. He's not the Sheriff. Why, he's nothing more than a hired gunman. And what we're doing here is legal. This morning, I got a letter from Denver, Bransbury. Regan represented the Denver Mining Company, that is, until the mayor and I elected him Sheriff of Miles City. What do you mean, you elected him? The law states, in Montana, a new sheriff is elected by vote of the mayor and the judge. And his name doesn't make any difference, as long as he proves to be a good sheriff. Come on. Wait a minute there, Bransbury. Seems to me I ought to have an apology from you. You're under arrest for threatening an officer of the law. Get moving. Get moving. Judge. <laughs> the man who killed him must have been in a terrible hurry if he left a high-class weapon like this behind. But it's not possible. What's the matter, Sheriff? You sure got him on the spot, Judge Holden. The owner of that rifle happens to be his future father-in-law. It's clear to us all. The farmers are behind all this. They're the ones that are afraid of having a trial. This time we're going to get justice and we're going to get it our way. Let's hang Norton. There's not going to be any hanging. Not without a trial. Regan, this gun may be damaging evidence against Norton. He must be arrested. I'll get him, Judge. But don't be so sure that he's the one who'll end up with a rope around his neck. Find Sam and Buck. We gotta move fast. Sally! Sally, back what you need. We're getting out. Did you hear me? But I don't understand. Why are we going? The cattlemen have set a trap for us. They'll get us good if we don't escape. Regan will protect us. He's got to arrest me. Believe me, Sally. This time he's got the better of us. Now hurry up before it's too late. You'll incriminate yourself. My name's on that gun, and that's accusation enough. Come on, Sally. It must be a trap. How did you lose the gun? Why don't you ask Buck and Sam? They're the ones that robbed me. All right, let's go get them and make them explain. You think I'm crazy? Come on, Sally. Stay right there. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but I'm going. And don't try to stop me. One step more and I'll shoot. You've got to try to trust me. No, Uncle, no. It's much better for you, Norton. Oh, 
I must be crazy, but I'll... I'll do it for you. about it, Smitty. You're going to be all right. Uh, it, it's too late. Already. Already I feel like an angel. I'm sorry to go. You're the... You're the, the best sheriff that... that Miles City ever... We've got to stop Amos or else they'll burn every farm in Montana. That's suicide, Sheriff. We must wait at least until Graham arrives. There's no time to lose, Judge. Tell Graham I need help when he gets here with his men. Too many against you, Regan. I'll help you. Why? I'm doing it for my daughter. After you got away with it all this long, I'm mighty surprised you're giving in. Shall we go, my friend? <laughs> a bandit and a bounty killer. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Two gunmen who hope to bring a little law and order to Mile City. Yeah. Farmers will learn who owns the land around here once and for all. Belongs to us, and we're taking it. Work to do. 
Hey, Ma, look. Quick, come inside. Which way do you think they'll come? Those hills are kind of covered. I think they'll probably come from over there. If so, they'll get a surprise. Outside and tell the others to surrender. Get me. Yeah, go on. Go ahead. 
I'll keep you covered. Thanks. It is Jim Norton. You want me? Come and get me! Come on! Dynamite. We'll have to blow them out. Go get it. You go with them. I've only got three bullets left. What are you going to do? Wait for them to get here. Reagan, watch out! No! <laughs> Have you got the dynamite? I got it. Give it to me. Listen to me, Reagan. I'm going to count to three. Come out of there with your hands up or I'm going to blow you both to bits. Don't believe it. They'll kill us anyway. The dirty... I won't wait any longer, Regan. Count one, two, three! I'm blind. I can't see anymore. Help me. Your uncle was a good man. To bring peace, he gave his life for Montana.
24th of March, 1877. The governor of the state of Montana has decreed as of this date, the partition of the land among settlers and residents shall be as follows. Whosoever shall enter legally into possession of land has the just right to enclose it with fences of any nature. Cattle raisers who depend on pasture for grazing have crossed such enclosed land when the sustenance of their herd so requires. Let this henceforth be the law in this state to which I affix my signature and the seal of the state of Montana.